Okay, so our next topic for discussion is obstructive versus restrictive lung diseases. And basically the first measurement we want to look for is the spirometry. And on spirometry, we're going to be looking at the FEV1 and the FVC. The FEV1 is a forced expiratory volume in one second, and the FVC is a forced vital capacity. Now basically, if we have a decreased FEV1, FVC ratio, we've made our diagnosis of an obstructive type of disease. And what characterizes obstructive type of diseases? Increased airway resistance, increased total lung capacity, decreased FEV1, FVC ratio, and decreased expiratory flow rate. Now, examples of obstructive type of lung diseases are COPD, asthma, chronic bronchitis, and bronchiectasis. Now, how do we distinguish what type of obstructive disease it is? We're going to give the patient a trial of albuterol. And basically, once we give the patient a trial of albuterol, if the FEV1 is raised more than 20%, we've made our diagnosis of asthma. And how are we going to treat acute attacks of asthma? First, oxygen. Second, peak flow. Third, we're going to give albuterol. And fourth, we're going to give steroids for 14 days. And we want to wean off the steroids after 14 days. And only if we see acute shortness of breath in this patient can we give IV methylprednisolone. Otherwise, we're going to give oral prednisone and we're going to taper off after 14 days. And in later visit videos, we're going to do a asthma exacerbation a little more in depth because it's pretty important for your exam. And if the asthma attack is life-threatening and poorly responsive to beta-2 agonists, it's known as status asthmaticus. Look for pulses paradoxus in this patient. And the treatment of status asthmaticus is intubation, IV corticosteroid, albuterol plus ipratropium. If the asthma attack is secondary to beta blockers, we're going to give an anticholinergic such as ipratropium. If the asthma attack is exercise induced, we have to give prophylactic chromalin and albuterol before the patient exercises. It's very important. Okay. Now we figured out that the patient has an obstructive lung disease. We've given a trial of albuterol. If the FEV1 was increased over 20%, we made the diagnosis of asthma and we followed the algorithm, algorithm on how to treat it. Now, if after the trial of albuterol, there's a mild or no response to this trial of albuterol, we've made our diagnosis of COPD. Now, how do we check what type of COPD it is? To check what type of COPD it is, we're gonna, we're gonna have to do a DLCO. Okay, and when we check our DLCO, if it's normal, we've made our diagnosis of bronchitis. If the DLCO is low, we've made our diagnosis of emphysema. Okay, and basically, our treatment of the chronic COPD -er is ipratropium inhaler, albuterol inhaler, and we have to give our pneumococcal vaccine and our yearly influenza vaccine. It's very important, okay? And the time that we're gonna do long-term oxygen therapy is when the PO2 is less than 55 and the O2 sat is less than 88%. Now the question they ask in COPD very commonly on the test sometimes is what is associated with a decrease in mortality in patients with COPD. And the number one thing that decreases mortality in patients with COPD is to stop smoking. And the second thing that decreases mortality in patients with COPD is actually oxygen, home oxygen therapy, especially at nighttime. So the only two factors that decrease mortality in patients with COPD, remember, stop smoking and home oxygen. And we want to also remember about COPD, we're never going to give steroids in this patient because remember, steroids are only given in inflammatory type of diseases. So they're never given. So the treatment of chronic COPD is ipratropine inhaler, albuterol inhaler, and we have to give our yearly vaccinations. Next, if our spirometry is normal, if we see a patient with cough, shortness of breath, wheezing, and tightness of the chest, and our spirometry is normal, we're going to do a methacholine challenge test. And based on this methacholine challenge test, if our FEV1 is decreased, we've made our diagnosis of asthma. And we're going to follow the uh, algorithm as followed. 
and if the FEV1 is normal, it's normal, the patient's normal, okay? Now, if we've looked at spirometry and we see a decrease in the forced vital capacity, we're gonna be thinking restrictive type of lung diseases. What are restrictive type of lung disease characterized by? It's characterized by increased lung recoil, a decrease in all lung volumes, and an increase or normal FEV1, FVC ratio, which differs from our obstructive disease, which has a decrease in the ratio. And our restrictive disease is actually having an increase or normal ratio. Now, once we've made our diagnosis of restrictive type of lung diseases, what are things that can cause restrictive type of lung diseases? Um, obesity can actually cause it. Kyphosis can cause it. Um, fibrosing lung disease can cause it actually, such as sarcoidosis. Um, amyloidosis can cause it. Hemochromatosis can cause it. Um, any type of interstitial lung disease can cause it. I'm going to go over a couple more later on. Now, once we've made our diagnosis of restrictive lung disease, we want to look at the DLCO. Here we're seeing this DLCO again, okay? And if the DLCO is normal, we know it's a chest wall problem, secondary to something like kyphosis or obesity. But if the DLCO is low, we know the patient has an interstitial problem. And if our interstitial problem if we have an interstitial problem and the biopsy shows an inflammatory infiltrate, we're gonna do one of two things. Now, steroids are given in, this, in these conditions. Sarcoidosis, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, and beryliosis. And steroids are not useful and they have not been proven effective in silicosis, asbestosis, and bisonosis. And we know steroids can have long-term complications, so we don't wanna give steroids in patients with silicosis, asbestosis, and bisonosis, and it may be in your test question. They may try to trick you, okay? So remember, steroids are only given in sarcoidosis, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, and beryliosis. And basically, that's our obstructive versus restrictive lung disease, and we can quickly go over asthma and some of the chronic treatment for asthma. Now, these are the four types of asthma. It, mild intermittent, mild persistent, moderate persistent, and severe persistent. Mild intermittent is, is when an asthma attack happens less than or equal to two times per week, or nocturnal awakening less than or equal to two times per month. And in this case, we're only gonna give short-acting beta-2 agonists such as albuterol for patients. So mild intermittent, just short-acting beta-2 agonists. If the attack happens more than two times per week, but not daily, or nocturnal awakening happens more than two times per month, it's known as mild persistent disease, and our treatment is a daily inhaled low-dose corticosteroid plus a beta-2 agonist such as albuterol. If there's daily symptoms, but there's relief between attacks with the use of beta-2 agonists, or there's more than one nocturnal awakening per week, it's known as moderate persistent and we're gonna treat these patients with daily inhaled high dose corticosteroids and a long acting beta agonist such as salmeterol. And as needed, we're gonna give short acting beta agonists. And severe persistent, persistent is characterized by continuous symptoms with nocturnal awakening frequently. By frequently, I mean four to five times per week. And the treatment of severe persistent is oral corticosteroid, which is very bad. Um, and has a lot of side effects, as well as high dose inhaled corticosteroid with ac uh, long acting beta 2 agonists such as salmeterol and short acting bronchodilators such as albuterol as needed. So mild intermittent, just beta 2 agonists, mild persistent, low dose corticosteroid plus beta 2 agonists, moderate persistent is high dose corticosteroid as, as well as a long acting and a short acting. And severe persistent is when we're gonna to go to an oral corticosteroid, and then we're gonna do the same thing, high dose inhaled corticosteroid, and a long acting, uh, such as salmuterol, with a short acting as needed. And this is pretty much everything we need to know about obstructive versus restrictive, and we're gonna go over acute exacerbation of asthma in later videos, okay? Enjoy.